What's going on YouTube? It's time for week one of the Pokemon Premier League with your coach Necrostevo of course and the week one matchup is up against Slyro and the Pittsburgh Pyroar. Uh, no Pyro on his team but he is rocking Arcanine, Weavile, Hitmontop, Roserade, Hydragon, and Bronzong. Uh, he also had access to Mega Altaria. I really expected him to bring um, Mega Altaria to our matchup because uh, yes I do have Caesar on my team but I was just expecting him to bring it because that's a great Pokemon. Why wouldn't you bring it? Uh, I ended up going with a banded Pangoro just because he didn't have very many things that could switch in on Pangoro. And Pangoro could generally take a single hit from anything he had to offer. Uh, I had Magic... Um, excuse me. I had Unaware Clefable because I was really worried about him setting up with either Weavile or Altaria. And I wanted to check to those. Um, I had the Life Orb Swords Dance Caesar. A sub called Mind Chandelure. I didn't want to go Scarf because if I went Scarf, then he could just bring in Weavile afterwards and Pursuit Trap me. I didn't want to deal with that. I had a mixed Obama Snow uh, with Earthquake as the coverage move in order to hit Arcanine and Bronzong. Assuming he brought a Heatproof Bronzong, which I did think he might bring just because of how um, obvious it would be that I'd be bringing Chandelure to patch up Caesar's weaknesses. And then, of course, I also brought Zatu because Zatu is basically a full stop to Bronzong. And to a lesser extent, Roserade. Uh, I went with a much more specially defensive build with enough speed, just to outspeed any type of Lantern that he might have that's not Scarfed, because he did have access to Lantern. Looking back on it, I would have really liked Rotom Wash in this matchup. I didn't bring Rotom Wash just because Lantern kind of shuts it down. Uh, but without Rotom Wash, my team really falls prey to his Arcanine after my Chandelure goes down. So that was kind of the matchup I was playing around in my head. I did end up leading with Pangoro just because I could hit everything that he had and I knew he wouldn't likely lead with Weavile, which Weavile um, can use low kick for a pretty decent amount of damage. Uh, and if even if he switched out into Hitmontop, a banded knockoff would not only get rid of his item so I could tell what type of Hitmontop he was, but also it would do a decent amount of damage even after it Intimidate. So we're just going to start off with Pangoro here. For the most part my plan here is a cook knockoff. Uh, he does start off with Bronzong as I predicted, so that's nice. I could have also clicked Parting Shot there, but I, if I could start whittling down Hitmontop early on, once Hitmontop is gone, Pangoro kind of has a field day. I do get a critical hit on my knockoff there. It doesn't really matter too much just because of how um, much we end up switching in and out. I thought about this switch for a while, and I was afraid he'd have a coverage Rock-type move predicting my switch into Zatu because that was pretty obvious. So I went into Clefable. If I had switched on to Zatu there, it would have been perfect. Uh, I went for Thunder Wave, hoping that he would stay in and go for a coverage move like a Poison Jab or something, which wouldn't do very much and I could slow down his hitmon top. But he goes out into Bronzong, which is annoying because now if he uses Gyro Ball, it's going to do more damage. But he actually has Heavy Slam, which is better in this scenario because I, Zatu is actually relatively fast. And uh, I think after the Paralysis, Gyro Ball would have done more damage there. I was a little bit dismayed by how little damage that Heat Wave did. Uh, he does get paralyzed, but since that's all the Heat Wave did, it really doesn't matter. I would have liked to save Heat Wave to reveal it as he tried to switch in something like a Weavile, predicting a Sake type attack. But that's okay. We're going to go for U turn here just in case he switched out. Um, since he is using Heavy Slam, I figure he might have uh, a Rock type move, maybe, so I didn't want Zatu to get hit by that. And I go out into my. Wonderful Pangoro here once again, and he goes for Payback, so that was really nice. I really wanted to click uh, Drain Punch right here, which even after the Intimidate, Drain Punch might have been able to finish Hitmon top off from that point. But I figured he might predict that and just stay in and then hit me uh, with something weird. So and I also didn't want Pangoro to get status, so I really wanted to punish him if he did stay in. Um, here my HP EVs on Zatu really pay off, but I predict incorrectly. I thought he would switch, but he has Sucker Punch. If I had just gone for Psychic right there, that would have been awesome. Because that would have eliminated one of his Intimidate users from his team. Uh, of course, that is also his main switch. And here I did predict Arcanine coming in, and I needed to find out what type of Arcanine it was. We see Intimidate, so that's important. And I knock off a Muscle Band, so I, at the time I was thinking that it was a weird... Bulky set and then Muscle Band for added offense just to pick up some KOs. But seeing Muscle Band makes me think that he probably has some type of weird coverage such as Iron Tail or Crunch. And so I really wanted to figure out what type of coverage he had. 
I bring in my physically defensive Clefable here, which actually is a little bit more mixed to take special hits a little bit better. Uh, but it is it is more physically inclined. Uh, and with the Toxic, I'm really, really pressured here to protect. And he just keeps on going for Flare Blitz. So I was thinking, okay, if he has Iron Tail, he's going to use it right now. Because he knows I can just switch in my Chandelure. And if he goes for Crunch, then I just get to heal up again. So I didn't think if he had Crunch, I didn't think he would use it right then. I thought if he used a coverage room, he'd use Iron Tail right then. But he has Crunch, and he uses it immediately, which just sucks. Because I could have gone into Pangoro there. I could have just stayed in with Clefable and Thunder Waved him. That sucks so hard that he got that prediction so right at, the, at that moment. Because if I had just stayed in and gone for T-Wave, that would have been amazing. But I do get to drop back in Pangoro here. Because since he does have Crunch, I figure he wouldn't have close combat on his Arcanine. Uh, I'm just going to go for Parting Shot this time in case he decided to switch it up, predicting a knockoff and go into High Dragon or something weird like that. This means I can switch out, and I thought I could go out into Zatu and use this as an opportunity to roost up. Um, I was hoping that it didn't have any weird coverage moves, and I was also playing the game of, I really hope he doesn't Pursuit Trap me right here. So I just go for Roost to heal up. I get a good amount of HP back, and now I get to see what type of High Dragon this is. I'm not really worried about High Dragon because I do have Obama Snow. And here I completely overpredict. I went for a U-turn, expecting him to go for either a Dragon-type move, which I could definitely comfortably take, or to go for his own U-turn, expecting an obvious switch. But he just goes straight for Dragon uh, Dark Pole, so that all that I completely overpredicted there. Um, I am just going to go for Drain Punch finally, because I'm tired of Hitmontop coming in on Pangura. We need to show Hitmontop who's the boss here as far as fighting types go, even though Hitmontop is still my favorite fighting type. Overall, I really, really like Pangoro's design. Uh, I was tempted to just stay in there, but then in the back of my head, it's like, nah, he probably has Dazzling Gleams, let's just switch out of here. Uh, and that's exactly what he went for. Um, I could have gone into Caesar right there, actually, on the Dazzling Gleam hit, and then forced him to go for a Hidden Power Fire, and then switched out into someone else. But that he did reveal the Hidden Power Fire, so it's not terrible. Um, right here, I should have clicked Earthquake. I had nothing to lose by clicking Earthquake at this point in the battle. I I was about to click it, but I in my head it was just, well, if he stays in and goes for the Sludge Bomb first, he could get a critical hit, and then I won't have a single chance to win if I click Earthquake, because I think Earthquake and Ice Shard would still leave me missing a little bit of HP if he's any type of a defensive Rose Raid at all. Uh, and so I, it makes me really regret it, because if I had gone for Earthquake, he would have died to his own recoil from the hail, the hail and the Flare Blitz. And then I would still have my Pangoro, but now I'm forced to leave Pangoro in a double down, delicious double down situation. Which was just really annoying, because if I had played that properly, click the Earthquake there, because that, I don't, I went back and counted afterwards, he couldn't have KO'd me without a Life Orb, or Specs or something like that, and we know that he didn't have that for his item. Um, then that means that Arcanine would have gone down, I would have still had a full health Pangoro for the most part, and then I could have gone for um, Ice Shard, and then I would have been able to bullet punch my way to victory. But now, I'm down to just Caesar, unfortunately, and yes I am able to take out Hydreigon, but Roserade's health is just too high for me to take it out in one hit without a choice band. Uh, so he just gets to go out into Nando. And finish me off with the Hidden Power Fire. Unless I get a crit? Nope. Nope. Not quite. Uh, and that definitely shows, based on the damage, though, that he's not uh, a defensive Rose Raid. So, but, you know, them's the breaks. That's the first week of the Pokemon Premier League. I need to get some more experience with using Obama Snow. Just because uh, it's not a Pokemon that I've used very much. So I need to do some practice matches on Showdown to get a better idea of its capabilities and so that I can definitely coach a little bit more effectively in the next match. That being said, Slyro, that prediction with Crunch there, I I really felt like I waited it out because I came in with Clefable, Flare Blitz, Flare Blitz, okay, I think he's going to go for his coverage move now, and then I just guessed incorrectly. So that was kind of a 50-50 shot there. Um, if I had stayed in and gone for the Thunder Wave, or even if I had just switched to Pangoro, which is what I was considering, uh, that battle definitely could have gone very differently. So, thanks a lot for the battle, Slyro. I did enjoy it overall. Uh, really got to exhibit some of Pangirl's awesomeness. I do hope you guys enjoyed this battle as well. And look forward to the next week of the Pokemon Premier League. 
I actually don't know who my opponent is, but it's going to be awesome, whatever it is. So look forward to that, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye now.